For this episode, we're gonna be talking about Rail 7.2's new Omakase Rubocop rules that includes out of the box with the new gem Rubocop Rails Omakase. And this is designed for teams who haven't really decided on a strict set of rules yet, but gives some baseline consistency for your code using the Rubocop linter to make sure that it enforces things like spacing, hash syntax, arrays, and all that good stuff. Today's episode is also sponsored by Tuple. We're gonna be diving in to looking at this stuff on a Tuple call uh, like we would on a normal day uh, at GoRails. Kent and Colin are gonna join me and we're gonna take a look at the Rubocop rules. So let's go dive in. I'm gonna join Colin over here in the pairing lounge. Hello, sir. Uh, just wanted to hang out with you guys. Uh, let's add Kent. He's not currently in the pairing lounge with us. Yeah, yeah, definitely bring him in because this is something something he did that I'm looking at here, so we should bring him in for uh -oh. this. Uh, hey, guys. You're being called out. <laughs> right. um, so uh -oh. today we wanted to talk about the new Rail 7.2 uh, Rubocop rules. The mm. Omakase Rubocop rules. Omakase. Um, which, Kent, you have uh, actively worked <laughs> against in this Perfect. line of code. Um, Very much so. Mission accomplished. So, you know, it's been interesting because in Rails for 20 years now, um, just less than 20 years is when this guy, I think this got added like eight months ago or whatever. Mm. The Rubocop rules are something that David uh, has been pretty against of like Ruby is a language where you can express yourself in infinite different ways. So he wants to make sure we embrace that in Rails. But also there is trouble where Rails has got how many thousands of contributors and everybody writes Ruby a little bit differently. So uh, he agreed and wrote Omakase Rubocop um, rules uh, for Rails. So yeah. When you're and writing I, code, we can be consistent. What are you yeah, saying? Yeah, I, I was going to say, when I look at this, it makes me say, oh my gosh, eh? Yeah. You say, this is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, exactly. Or maybe you've got the old, oh mm. my God. <laughs> yep, exactly. The table flip reaction. Um, yeah. So let me take over your screen. But basically, uh, you know, stuff like this, used to be written all the time. Like when I learned Ruby, it was going from 197, some apps were using two, and um, this was the old syntax, and two introduced mm -hmm. the shorthand syntax for hashes. Um, yep. So this part right here is not recommended or encouraged at all anymore. Which I believe they used to uh, refer to as like the hash rocket syntax, right? Yes. So it looks like a little yes. rocket blast and off right this there. Little yeah thing um and so what they would really want you to do here is say only create and having um the colon on the left normally gets flat uh, like the symbol gets flipped and the colon's on the right but it's a lot shorter um, yeah especially when you have multiple options for something like this that yep. might have only it might have an if it might have other options in there um, and so we can run bin rubocop to actually run the linter, which is going to then complain that, uh, well, Kent, unfortunately, four. you have four offensives four. in one line of code. <laughs> score. Um, and it's just little things. So it's, it's saying, like, if you're going to use a lambda and you got curly braces here, you need a space on the left. Um, if you have curly braces, you also need a space on the insides. Um, and then also use the new Ruby one nine hash syntax. Ooh. Oh yeah, it was one nine introducing Ooh. for uh, like ahead of way time. Behind yeah. on this one. This one is, nine. <laughs> this is some old stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, because what was interesting was like you were writing code, and maybe your application code could take advantage of one nine, but every library in Rails itself and all all that needed to be compatible with one eight seven and earlier uh so they like libraries just couldn't use that syntax and so it just became a thing that kind of lingered a lot longer than than you would want um and so we can then um run this so it will tell us what's wrong and we also can run dash capital a so this is the flag that's going to autocorrect i was going to say i see it says four of them are autocorrectable i was going to ask if you oh, had yeah. to do that yeah you can point that out here the 
Four offenses detected. Four offenses autocorrectable, which means if we run this autocorrect version, it still uh, prints them out. Um, but instead of saying they were autocorrected, they were actually corrected. Mm -hmm. um, and so now you see this code up here. It was automatically updated. We didn't touch it at all. RuboCop did that for us. And now we have a space here, a space here, a space here, and modern hash syntax yeah. over here, which is yes. good. Yes. Yeah. So, Chef's kiss. So really, this is something that I am really happy to have. Like, yes, ship it. Because um, <laughs> just the amount of like different formats that even I do, sometimes I will do it one way. Sometimes I'll do it a different way. And there's just no consistency. This is a big help. The other thing mm -hmm. I want to show you guys um, for this, I'm going to use the link share feature here and open up your browser. This is the repository for it. If you want to go ahead and click on RuboCop YML, this library, as you could tell, is um, almost no code. But this is the special magic, the special sauce that the Rails core team, or maybe just DHH, has decided um, on the rules they want to enforce. So th basically, RuboCop has this enormous list of things um, but you'll see here, uh, if you have a case statement, when and end it should be on the same indentation um, amount or whatever. Easy peasy. So he's gone through and enabled a handful of these. Um, I don't know how many there are. This file is how big? It's fairly big. 200 lines of code or something, yeah. or uh, lines of config. Yeah. But... You know, you could read through this and kind of see empty lines around block body. There's no explanation for that, but some of the ones that are a little less uh, yeah. descriptive. I was actually looking around the, the method definition one, which I'm guessing is something more along the lines of like, if you did like def this and then something like space there, and then something like that, I'm guessing is what that's trying to... Give her a shot, see what it says. Do not do. Run it. Yep, there it is. Yeah, detected at beginning and end. I also yep. think uh, one of those might be for, like, if you had def bar and no space in between. Oh, oh, no space, no between. space in between. Yes. <laughs> You're just uh, in that habit of writing cor perfectly correct code all the time. Yep, it's ingrained in my fingers. Def jam. Oh, yeah, def jam. That's a good one. Should have did that one. Did this? Can you even write right, valid right syntax now. here, bro? Oh, no. Get rid of this line here. And then put your space in there. There you go. Now oh, run that, it and see oh, it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Between the method definitions. Yes. I got you. I think that would... Oh, it doesn't care. Nope. That's doesn't interesting. Care about that one. I thought it might. Cool, cool. And I don't like that space at all. In there. I would never do that. <laughs> I guess you can add in the rule. So yeah, you yeah, could cool. um, go back to the the homepage here or uh, the root of the. That's not gonna necessarily. Yeah, it does. Go back down to the README, and um, I believe there's yeah. So this will add a default dot Rubocop file, mm. but then um, it's just saying, hey, let's inherit these from the gem, and then you can add your own rules. So if your team right. decides. We'd like to have some other rules, or maybe I assume you could go overwrite and disable some of the ones from the gem and gem, turn them yeah. false. Um, you should be able to go and enable all the customizations you want in here. So maybe Kent will go in here and enable the old uh, <laughs> hash hash syntax. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bringing it back. He just Bring loves rockets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me, let me go up here. Um, and show you guys literally one file <laughs> that's empty. <laughs> Amazing. So if that uh, doesn't tell you how um, you know wonderfully complex this this library is, uh, I don't know what does. But this is literally just a repository storing some rules. Then if we want to go to uh, Rails Rails and look at the RuboCop template, oops. RuboCop. 
app generator .tt. This is the one we're looking for. Um, this is where it actually runs Rubo RuboCop. So this is your bin RuboCop. It's just a template oh, right. built yeah, into sure. the generator. And then just loads Ruby gems, make sure it has um, that RuboCop as a dependency, ready to go, loaded, and then takes any basically any of the arguments and then passes them over to uh, RuboCop. So that's that's it. Um, it's really straightforward. It's uh, another one of those things where like it feels like they did a ton of work to add uh, linting to your Rails, but when you look at the source code, yeah, it's not, like the not, gem not doesn't not have any features in it. <laughs> yeah, there's no yeah. Ruby code in the Literally gem. It's a, a YAML file. Set. Yeah. Wow. And then and then yeah, just this. And um, if I jump you back to here, I think in the gem spec you'll see that it requires uh, RuboCop, RuboCop Rails performance in mini tests, um, just so that it has all its needed dependencies. So by inheriting in it, this gem in your gem file, you'll get all those uh, features. So you can add this to, I think any Rails application with any versions, because there's no requirements for Rails here. Maybe RuboCop Rails does have some, um, but minimum version dependency, yeah. Yeah, but you could definitely add this and then uh, grab the RuboCop.tt file from the oh, Rails sure. repo and, and then bring it in, yeah, and bring it into an older application, um, like we might do with you know our older apps or something. So yeah, hmm. pretty cool, cool, right? Like yeah, yeah, definitely. I thought it was pretty elegant, especially when you find that the gem has actually no code. <laughs> In it at all yeah totally <laughs> and actually yeah. this is is funny the first time i've ever seen uh this where the gem just specifies the version in the gem spec mm. normally it'll specify the version in the version .rb file. file yeah but there's no module here for it to load there's no ruby files for it to load so it doesn't do any of that it just says the only file to include in the gem is the rubocop.yml here uh, yeah, which is hilarious. Yeah, and I think uh, actually one other thing I want to try and test out real quick here is like the flexibility of it to not complain about certain things. Um, for example, if we do, uh, let me go up into our controller here and do like the before action. Um, if we do like a block, let's just mm -hmm. say, or let's just put foo. Versus like if we do it, the Why same don't you way. put the only create on that one as well? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, puts food down here too. Um, on the on the block one, on the do in block one? Both of them if you want. It it would go in the same spot because you've got... Ruby will take the do end or the curly braces and treat that as a, a block the same way. So yeah, both of so those should it, be the which same. Which is what I was going to say is like, uh, I don't think it's going to complain about if you want to do multi-line blocks with do in or curly braces. Uh, so that's yeah, kind of nice. That's not like super strict, you know. Give her a run and we'll see if you're yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, we got uh, one. Let's see. Uh, oh, you probably have to wrap that one in parentheses so it knows that those are arguments to before action. Oh, and right, that yeah. the curly brace is uh, actually a block. Hmm. With do end, you don't have to do the curly braces. Yeah. Oh, wait. Not there. Nope. Yeah, around create. Yeah. This one will get you an error or uh, an offense. Oh, not having a space. You've offended me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could alias bin Chris to bin Let's Robocop. See. Yeah. So like, it, it, that'd be fun. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like yeah. it doesn't yeah. complain about it. It doesn't care if you want to multi-line one way or the other, which is, I think, I think, I think it's cool. I think that's mm -hmm. the really nice thing that David mm -hmm. did with this, where it's like, we've used standard RB, um, but it actually will encourage you to use uh, do or the curly braces in specific situations, and it goes a lot more in depth. And if you want to give your team the flexibility of any of those things, this is going to make sure that you're like, the syntax that matters, uh, which is maybe indentation, um, spacing, that like the basics, it's going to like take care of those, but no more. It's not really going to in interfere with, um, yeah. you know, sometimes I forget that we 
had, there was an article or something that somebody had written about using, and maybe it was Justin Searles, uh, with the curly braces in certain types of blocks and then do end for other types of blocks. Oh, um, I know. I read that from uh, Jim Wyrick. Jim and Wyrick, I believe, that's... And, and mm. I, I think I actually learned about that for, through Avdi Grimm, <laughs> and he referenced Jim Wyrick, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I think maybe Standard RB kind of tries to enforce that stuff as well or something. Mm. Um, so it's like the option if you want to go and apply a lot more rules, but this is a good starting place if your team does not do anything at all. Uh, and you would still like them to have the flexibility to do a lot of the different syntax options. Um, bin uh, RuboCop built into Rails or the RuboCop Omakase um, rules are going to be awesome for this. So, yeah, I agree. I yeah. like it. Cool. Um, and then That's also, good. I believe this is also added to the GitHub Actions um, out of the box. Mm. So in new Ooh. rails apps that might have github action set up it's going to be checking your code when you push up pull requests and merge to main um so then your team will be enforced uh to be right. consistent and i guess yeah. technically if you wanted to you could set up the github actions to not just run the linter and say test uh pass or fail but you could actually yeah. use the tokens to have it automatically create a commit right. with the corrections yeah. If you uh, wanted to do, go the extra cool. mile, um, mm -hmm. and you could have your your developers automated their um, their their fixes for the offenses or whatever. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yep. All right, gentlemen. Um, I think we have all agreed that this is a. I think it's a big win just for consistency for Rails teams. Like one less thing for you to um, have to worry about. And the other thing is like I came from Python where you were doing four space indents and you didn't have end and other stuff. And those languages are very strict about that because if you don't properly tab in something, it's not going to run your loop or your block of code or whatever. Mm -hmm. Ruby has more fluid syntax, so you can do a lot of weird things and it works fine, but it also can be strange when somebody else comes across your code and it's like, right. What is this? <laughs> yeah, those those four space indentations are a good way to break the other like uh, eighty or a hundred or whatever uh, column you know line rule you have set in place too. Yep, yep. I forgot about that. Our yeah. monitors are widescreen now, so we don't uh -huh. need. Them. Yeah, I think the last one I saw was like up to one twenty. Now it went wow. from like eighty to one twenty. It lets you go without complaining. Yeah. So I think I think that was over in standard. I don't think that this one does it. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, gentlemen. Um, cool. Cool. We'll have to start using this on our projects now. Built in. Yes. <laughs> all right. I will talk cool. to you all later. Sounds good. Talk to you later. See you. Thanks again to Tuple for sponsoring this episode. If you want to pair program with your team, we highly recommend Tuple. You can give it a try with 50% off your first three months using the code GORAILS at checkout. We couldn't live without it and uh, just wanted to say thanks to Tuple again for sponsoring this episode.